Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Drop the Point. I am Hambone and I'm joined by none other than Noel Zero. What's going on, buddy? Not much, man. Uh, what did Troy call me? Oh, uh, man, what the was it? The Clutch Hero Zero. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and just so everybody knows, I want to say it here. From now on, when you see Tro- uh, Troy, call him Drone Too Long TX. Oh, if you don't know, we are Siege Fanatics and uh, Troy has a tendency to be stuck on that drone for quite some time into the round, which is only four minutes. So he could be on that thing for two minutes and 35 seconds. <laughs> I bet if you, if you broke, you know how they show all the time played yeah. on operators. If they had a time played on drone, Troy would be literally, he'd have the highest oh, time played on drone in the siege community. In the world, dude, he would definitely be number oh, yeah. one for drone usage. Uh, but I'm not complaining. It helps us get a lot of kills sometimes. Absolutely. But, uh, but I got to oh, give him a little crap, absolutely. you know. Absolutely. He has to have a little crap. So you're welcome. We love you. Um, but <laughs> before we get too fired up about Troy and his drone usage, today we are going to touch back on the division. We did do an episode on the Aimcast this past week about it. But we really want to make sure you guys have our opinion. And we actually got a question submitted by you guys. Submitted by someone in the community, so we're going to touch on that tonight and answer the questions and uh, see where we see where it goes from there. But before we jump into it, if you want to send us any questions, you can do that by sending them to onpoint at aimassistgaming.com, or you can uh, tweet us out on Twitter at aimassistgaming, and we'll tweet you back. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to read this email that we got. And we'll see what we think. Uh, This one is coming from Manilo. He is a listener, and he sent us in this question. So here's what it says. After listening to the latest AIMcast, I had a question for you, Hambone. You said you like The Division, but don't plan on playing it exclusively. And it wasn't like the Destiny beta, where you couldn't wait to play more. I feel similarly, but I can't tell why. I have friends who can't stand the third-person view, so they hated it. Come on, Josh. And friends falling over in love because of the RPG elements. No zero. But I'm somewhere in the middle like you, and I can't tell why. My question is, if Destiny had been delayed two years, and we just now played the beta, would we have fawned all over it like we did? Or was it a lack of options at the time of its release? I know the lack of options question is almost a cliche surrounding aspects of Destiny, but I honestly can't tell if I didn't like the Division beta because it was weak, or if I just really wanted to play other games like COD, Siege, Tomb Raider, etc. Thought maybe you'd answer on Drop the Point, or save it for when Boomslang is on the Aimcast, but no matter what, love the content, keep it up, from Manilo. So what do you think, Zero? Well, thank you, Manilo. We really appreciate the question, and I encourage everybody, any questions you have about anything video games, we love to answer them. But, so couple things um the first thing being the fact that he says was it a lack of options i think at the time when destiny came out in the beta and alpha it was new i mean the consoles were brand new so there was definitely somewhat of a lack of options i don't think that's the whole reason part of the reason i think that for you and some of the other people out there that played the division beta and was like well i don't feel the draw like I have to play this game immediately or I want more right now is because I really feel like and, and it's being confirmed that they left a lot out like there's supposed to be like a lot more random encounters in the world as you're running around so it's not a running simulator it's actually an RPG and you're going to have encounters and run into mobs and have things to do in the world but it was cut out of mm. the beta whereas if you look at Destiny's beta it was very much what you got. Right. I mean, that beta was spot on Earth when you got the mm-hmm. full game. So I think that's another problem is even though there was a beta, we didn't really get a taste of the of the cake. We don't know what the cake tastes mm-hmm. like yet. Yeah, we have a little. I think the best thing you can walk away with from the beta is 
overall, will the division be a game that you can play or that you will like? And I think that's about as close as you could get is like, okay, I like the mechanics. I like the, the, the shooting and the third person or the RPG elements. And that's about as far as you could go. Like you couldn't really go and be like, whoa, look at the trees and I can build this character out that way. And the loot is really cool. Like that, there just wasn't enough to really figure out if it was a game that was going to have you just like destiny pouring hundreds of hours in it, trying to get the best loot. But here's the question though. If, if that's the case that they cut out so much of it, how much are we actually missing? You know what I mean? I know we had, I think we touched on this on the game cast that we hope this isn't 25% of the game that we just saw during the beta. And that when they say that there's all these other aspects coming into the game, that they're actually meaty and substantial. So do you think that there's a ton more, like a lot more? Is there, is this a destiny situation where it's like, well, that's pretty much it. There's a few more things going on, but this is, this is it. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to say. Like I, I want to believe because, you know, there's a lot of stuff come out of, you know, obviously the division marketing is going to be pushing this game and they're going to be saying this, you know, everything they can within reason to sell you on the game. And I'm not, you know, calling anybody liars or nothing, but it is scary because it's like, how much am I missing? And like I told you before, I don't know if we said it on the show or not, but I told you if they came out and said like Destiny, remember we played the beta and they're like, oh yeah, that's only 25% of the game. And we were all thinking like, that's 25% right. of the game. Like, oh, no. They were saying that, like, no, 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 it's no big deal, guys. You've only played 25%. Like, you've only seen a quarter right. of this game. And it, all of us were freaking out, like, what? <laughs> We've seen 25% of this game? If the division came out and said that, if they came out and were like, oh, that's only 25% of the game, no worries, guys, I, I would be like, guys, you might want to really hesitate to buy. Because if that, I mean, that was such a small piece and the thing that i've heard over and over and you know and i've seen is like when a game only shows you a very narrow vertical slice of game Mm -hmm. that tends to be a scary thing because chances are in most cases the other the rest of it is either more the same or there's just not that much more to show so i don't know i'd like to see I'd like to know. I mean, okay, so there's supposed to be an open beta. This was leaked in, like, the Italian Xbox webpage or something. (laughs) I don't know. It was leaked overseas, and it was said that there's going to be an open beta sometime this month, meaning everybody's going to be able to get in and play. I encourage the Division dev team to open this game up like it's Siege and... Let us play everything. You remember Siege Beta, mm-hmm. Open Beta? Everything was there. Play the right. game. This game, they, when they do that Open Beta, I really encourage them to just say, here it is. Like, I get that they'll probably still level cap it mm-hmm. and maybe still give us the borders. But if there's random encounters on the map, put them in there. There's missions from level 1 to 8, put them in there. Start us at level 1. Let us go to level eight. Put every mission in there that's available from those levels. Like, put show us the meat and potatoes of this game. Show us the reason to buy this game. Reaffirm the reason why we're buying this on March right. 8. Right, no, I feel like it's almost necessary that they give us something like that because of the skepticism surrounding this game. And one other question, you know, based on Manilo's email, he says he has friends that hate the third-person view And I was wondering after playing it, you know, I told you my opinion on the cover based system that it's it's the best I've seen it in a long time for a cover based third person shooter. But it's just not my bag. Do you think they are kind of isolating the market by making it a third person only? Couldn't they make it third and first person like Starfront? I mean, Star Wars, Starfront. Um, (laughs) But you know what I mean? Why? Why does it have to be third person? I mean, okay, so it's like saying why why can't Gears be a right. first person, right? Like if you make a set out with a vision and you make a game a certain way, I mean, if it, if you don't like third person, then don't mm-hmm. play the game. I mean, honestly, I'm not saying that like spitefully, like just don't play it. Like if you don't like it, it's not your thing, don't play it. Because, I mean, there will be other first person shooters that come out that you will like and that may capture what Destiny is doing. If you need this game, 
and you need to have that feel of destiny, well, you might have to get over the fact that it's third person. The only thing I'll say about changing the perspectives of first and third person is typically what I've seen that being done is it it hinders like okay so if you're first person and i'm third person on the right. division right mm -hmm. in the dark zone i can peek corners and everything without risking my oh. life that you can't do because you're in first person so you're only handicapping yourself by being in first person because you will have to physically look over objects come out of cover to peep you know the enemies right so right there that's a huge dis gameplay disadvantage and it's only going to make it harder for that person in first person view to play the game at any kind of advantage. They're going to be at a disadvantage the entire time and it's not going to create a fun gameplay right. for them. Uh, and that makes, that makes perfect sense. And, and when you say it like that, um, I, it actually warrants, you know, like, Oh, okay. That, that makes sense to me. Uh, do you feel that the immersion factor is lost in the third person at all? Because I'll tell you what, I went in very skeptical, very negative of the third person element. And 10, 15 minutes into the game, I had almost forgotten about the third person yeah. I, I was in. Yeah, I mean, I think you can definitely get into it. The thing I do notice is, and we talked about this, I told you about uh, Total Biscuit. He made a, a video, Impressions of the Division. Love that guy. Y'all should check his videos out. I'm, you know, he doesn't know who I am, but I know who he is. <laughs> Uh, but he said it best, you know, the things that it does wrong is like, or as far as immersion goes, obviously it's not as immersive as a first person right. will be. And that's okay. Cause first person is like when you are, you know, when you're playing that character and it's more action oriented, being a third person is more like getting to love your character, like an RPG intends. The thing about it is like what I was telling you about, he he was saying about the dissonance about, Oh, well, this is an AK-47, but when I shoot it, it jumps like a mule. And that's not how it, this gun right. handles. But because it's in third person and the way that the systems work, it kind of has to handle that way. It kind of has to give you crappy aim, so you have to actually be better at managing the recoil to actually make fighting mobs worthwhile. Because, obviously, it's an RPG. and You can't be one-shotting mobs left and right. It just would take away right. from the game. Makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as immersion, I think that's that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. There's some things that will hurt on the immersion side. It won't be as immersive as Destiny, where you feel like you are the warlock. But at the same time, you'll get to learn it and love your little your little sprite that you have there yeah, in game. Absolutely. And his clothing. I mean, I yeah. know you played my size Barbie. <laughs> you were loving that. Anyway, I'm just I'm just saying I like to keep my guy trendy. If he's rocking his blue I hat, I want him to. Match. I got you, but. Um, the last thing I want to say before we get out of here uh, or get your opinion on is Tom Clancy has been around for a long time, right? We've been playing his games off and on. They've always been in the mix. But did anyone foresee three major titles in one year from Tom Clancy that are just changing the industry and monopolizing it right now? I mean, at least for us, we have Siege and then there's The Division and later on this year, what me and Troy are super excited about, Wildlands uh, Ghost Recon. So, I mean, are they killing the whole industry right now? Who's out there battling Ubisoft? Well, I got to say they are killing it because, okay, Siege may be the best game that Ubisoft has ever mm, created. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been playing games forever, and I've played plenty of Ubisoft games. And they've had a lot of great games to their to their name. Siege might be their best game mm. ever. Um, the Division, I think I'll have a lot of fun with. I think this would be really good. Funny thing is you you said you and Troy are really excited about uh, Ghost Recon. And it's funny that you say that because I bet you I'm almost more excited really? than y'all. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know, a little, a little story of, a two, or of a Null Zero here is the first game I played on Xbox Live when it was on the original Xbox was Ghost yeah. Recon. And I was super addicted. Right. So much so that like when I would play these other shooters that people were playing, like so much so that when Halo was coming out and people were doing land parties of Halo, I was like, this game sucks compared to <laughs> Ghost Recon. Oh, wow. Like I was in love with That's Ghost crazy. Recon. So I'm a huge Ghost Recon fan and I'm, 
I've played some of the other ones and didn't like them as much. So I'm really hoping like this one comes out and just smashes it, man. I'm like, it yeah. looks great. The graphics are there. I, I hope they smash Dude, it. I mean, Ubisoft is all over the market right now and all over our screens. And we're in. We're in. The, the one last thing I want to say about Ubisoft and the Tom Clancy games is it's extremely promising for these next two titles to see what they've done with Siege. If they can, like Siege, we talked about this on uh, the Siege of the Show podcast, how much time and detail, like they've taken care of everything that the community's wanted thus far. And if they haven't, they're like, we're still mm-hmm. working on it. And so the attention and the time that's been taken on Siege, it's extremely pl- uh, promising if they continue to do that with their other ti- the other Tom Clancy titles. Like if The Division is going to have the updates and the priority that Siege has had so far, I'm in. Like I'm like, dude, they're gonna, the, any problems we'll have, they'll fix it because, dude, every problem we've had with Siege, and by no means was Siege a broken right. game, they've yeah. fixed it. And they, I mean, this last update, we everything's like brand new it feels like so much better and everything looks so Mm much you know Mm -hmm. better so i'm i'm just really inspired by what they're doing right now that's absolutely true i mean we're 60 days in the siege and there's already been three major patches uh and we went through including content new content content, and we went through 20 minutes of uh patches or things on the patch notes that are fixed so they're they're really killing it and for any of uh, you out there that don't know that's a studio of 80 people working on Siege. Uh, there are 80 people making that game do what it does. So that's extremely promising because I know the division has more than 80 people working on it. Um, so like you said, if this is any sign of what we can expect from Mr. Clancy and Ubisoft, it's all positive stuff for them. I want to thank you guys for tuning into this episode. Don't forget if you want to submit a question. Send it to onpoint at amosysgaming.com. Check us out on Twitter and also look us up on iTunes or Podbean. Just search Amosys Gaming and you will find all of our shows. We have Siege the Show that comes out on Wednesdays. Obviously, this Drop the Point comes out on Tuesdays. And the Aimcast comes out every Monday. So, uh, yeah, really thank you guys for the support. I'm Hambone. He's Null Zero. And we'll see you when we see you. Thanks again, Manila, for the for the Absolutely. question.